Hello Year 7, it's Miss Murdoch again and I'm just continuing the work that we've been doing on the poem The Drum and we are looking to complete the analysis of the drum using our P's paragraphs. Your first task today is to do do now task is to match each word to its correct definition. So the four words are pleasure, liberty, ravaged and mangled and the definitions are severely damaged, to destroy by crushing or tearing, a feeling of happy enjoyment and satisfaction, and freedom from unfair rules. If you want to take on the star challenge, that is write a detailed sentence about war that includes two of the words above. Pause the video here and complete that task. Okay, so number one, pleasure. You should have put number one and matched it with C, a feeling of happy enjoyment and satisfaction. Two, liberty should be matched with D, freedom from unfair rules. If you have your liberty, you have your freedom. Three, ravaged means something is severely damaged. So you might say the cliffs were ravaged by the sea. So um, as they erode away, they're being ravaged by the sea. And then finally, four is B, which is mangled, is to destroy by crushing or tearing. Um, and that's obviously included within the poem itself, where we talk about um, the mangled limbs of the young men. Make sure you've got those correct definitions with the correct with the words so that you have them for future reference and to um, help your vocabulary. So just to make sure that we understand the drum, I want us to do a quick recap to help us remember the following. So thinking about the questions, what was it about? What did it describe in detail? How did the poet feel about war? And why do you think the poet wrote this poem? I want you to write in full sentences. So I think that, I know that. The poet described, what did he describe? One of the feelings that the poet presented was, and I think the poet wrote this poem because. So make sure you use full sentences and complete your response to the questions as above. Pause the video here and complete the task. To help us when we do P's paragraphs, it's a good idea to have a go at exploding quotes that either come from a text or from a poem, um, just so that you have a bit more detail um, idea about what you're writing about. And obviously it helps support you when you come to do your P's paragraphs. So I'm just going to do one um, and then I will ask you to do the other two. And obviously, if you want to, you can take on the star challenge as well. So the first one I'm looking at is widows, tears and orphans moans. So thinking about how might they feel? Why is this bad? What is the most powerful word and what does it mean? I'm going to say probably sadness. When I read this, I thought about widows, tears and orphans moans. When I think of widows and orphans, to me, that automatically makes me think that someone has lost someone very close to them. Um, and obviously the tears that they cry and their moans makes me feel um, very sad and that they're very um, alone in the world. Why is it bad? Obviously, because it means if they're crying and they're now if they're widows and they're now orphans, then someone, a family member has actually died and they will not be coming back. The most powerful word, obviously this is um, down to personal choice, but I would say the most powerful word here would probably be the noun moans, because obviously moans makes me think that someone is suffering either physical or mental pain. Um, and to me, that's quite powerful to think of, of the agony that these people are going through having lost their loved ones. So I want you to do a similar exercise with the two other quotes in the navy blue. So there's the mangled limbs and dying groans and the lures. Remember, lures is um, persuade or entice someone um, from cities and from fields. If you want to have a go at the star challenge, the other quote I put down there is the one that's at the last line of the poem, which is a catalogue of woes. Pause the video here and complete that task. I just want to quickly just go over what is a P's paragraph. Now, the P's paragraph, as we've said before, is a point, evidence, explore and zoom in. That is your P's paragraph. And as you move up and you do more GCSE work, we will add another Z, which will be the zoom out. But for the time being, the focus for you should be your point, evidence and explore. 
So your point is obviously the first sentence where you say the main idea or feeling the writer presents, because that's normally what the question will be about. It would normally be how does the writer present or feel? Um, and that's what the questions tend to be about. You will then use evidence to support what you're saying. So evidence is your quote and it must link to your point. It must, if you're saying something that the writer is feeling, your quote must link to that point. Explore. Explore and explain in detail what the quote suggests. Usually 12 plus words if you're exploring something. And then obviously the zoom in, which we put as a challenge, is pick out a single word from your quote and explain what else it could imply. So you, you will, will be using this structure as you go um, up through the years in school. And obviously when you come to do your GCSEs, it, it gives you um, a structure to work towards. So it means that if you use this structure, you should be able to always answer and respond to the questions. What I've done here is I've also added a model paragraph. So what I want you to do now is I want you to write this model paragraph so that you have it to reference when you come to write your own piece paragraph. So the model paragraph reads, the poet presents the feeling that war is horrendous for the young men who enlist. This is shown in the quote, mangled limbs and dying groans. This implies that the young men will experience great pain and eventually die from their injuries. Looking deeper, the poet has used the adjective mangled to also imply that the injuries sustained will be dead, devastating and horrific as their limbs will be crushed or torn apart by the enemy. So pause the video here, copy this model paragraph so that you've got one to reference when you come to do your own piece paragraph shortly. So what I want you to do, use your work from previous lesson and obviously today where we've looked at some of the other quotes and write a minimum of two P paragraphs based on the question, how does the poet present feelings about war? So remember your point, the poet presents the feeling that war is what? Evidence, this is shown in your quote, find your quote to support it and explore it, this implies that. If you want to get the higher marks, then look at the zoom in. Looking deeper, the poet has used the word and pick a word from your quote that also implies what. So successful minimum, I expect, is two paragraphs. Use a quote in each of those paragraphs. To gain the higher marks in your style challenges, write three paragraphs and give detailed explanations for explore, 12 plus words long, and add a zoom in sentence. Pause the paragraph and write your piece paragraphs now. Okay, hopefully you found that um, quite straightforward as we had explored quite a lot of the quotations. So what I want you to do now just to identify what you have done is circle where you use a quote in your paragraphs. So read back through your work and circle where you use a quote in your paragraphs. Underline where you give an explanation that's 12 plus words long and then put a super yellow star next to where you've written a third paragraph. Once you've done all that, collate your work together and send through to your English teacher. Thank you, Year 7s.